In our quest to discover a classification for all possible finite abelian groups, the most important processes we're going to need to be able to do with groups are sort of twofold. The first is to be able to take two groups which are probably relatively simple that might not have anything to do with each other and piece them together to form a larger group that has some more structure. The second process is to be able to do the opposite. Take a group that has some sort of complex structure that we might not understand and break it apart into smaller pieces. In this video, I want to take a look at a tool called the Short Exact Sequence, which gives us a framework in which we can understand both of those processes just from different points of view. How a Short Exact Sequence works is it consists of three groups, A, B, and C. We're going to think of the role that the group A plays as being like this first row in the Lagrange theorem table. So we're going to kind of think of A as being a subgroup inside of B, in a sense. And if the fates are kind, we'll also be able to think of the other rows in this table as being cosets of A and B. But first and foremost, if A is kind of thought of as the first row of this table of elements in B, then one way to put that onto solid ground is to think of the relationship between A and B, because in the beginning they might not have anything to do with one another. Think of that relationship as being a function relationship, where there's a function from the elements of A to the elements of B, and that function is one-to-one, -one, first of all. So, for example, if my A had four elements in it, then the image of A inside of B should also have four elements in it, if it's a one-to-one -one function. But we also want this function to have the homomorphism property. We want it to respect the algebraic operation of A inside of B. So whatever algebra joins the, the elements of A, that that same algebra is reflected in the elements of B. Notice that we don't necessarily require this function to be an isomorphism, because in general, this group here in the middle B might not be in one-to-one -one correspondence with all the elements of A. But satisfying the homomorphism property at least makes sure that the algebraic structure, the algebraic operation, is being respected. So we're going to kind of think of A here as having one element for each column of this Lagrange theorem-like table for the group B. And if there is a one-to-one -one homomorphism from A to B, that means that the image of A will be a subgroup of B. So my rule of thumb in thinking about the role that A plays in this short exact sequence is that A looks like it's a subgroup of B. All right, so that's how A relates to B in the short exact sequence. What about this third group? What's the role that that group plays? Well, that group is going to kind of play the role of the rows. If the fates are kind, then each of these rows inside of B will be a coset of the subgroup A. And then all we would do is take those rows and pick one representative from each of those rows, and that'll form the group C. The way we can make a structure out of that is to, again, think of there as being a homomorphism, a, a function from B to C that satisfies the product rule, right? respects the operations of the groups B and C. And we want that homomorphism to be onto, because we want each of the elements in my group C to be accounted for by one of these purported cosets. So the ideal picture that we have in mind for what a short exact sequence is doing is it's relating a subgroup of B, think of that as the A, and the cosets of that subgroup inside of B, so think of that as C. In a perfect world, that's exactly what this relationship will do. But we're going to need a little bit more technology and reassurance to know when that's actually going to be the case. But even when it's not actually the case, I still think of this relationship as being like the relationship of a subgroup of B and the cosets of that subgroup inside of B to the group B itself. So that explains the word sequence. So we have these three groups kind of one after the other. It explains the word short. So this is the shortest sequence of groups that's kind of any interesting. Uh, we can make longer sequences of this type, uh, but any shorter sequence is not going to be interesting for the reason we're about to talk about, and that's the word exact. Now you know that when a mathematician uses the word exact, uh, that it's going to mean something profound. It's going to mean something that is the same here in algebra as it is when we see the word exact in, say, a course on differential equations. Um, what does the word exact mean in this abstract context? So the word exact here is capturing the relationship of the subgroup A, the image of A inside of B, and the identity element here in my group C. 
To say that the sequence is exact means that there's a relationship between the kernel of this function f, the function from b to c, and the kernel, remember, by definition, is the set of everything in b which gets sent to the identity in c. So if we really are just kind of pushing these rows off to the right to form this projection of b onto c, then the kernel of this function will be the first row, because all of the elements in this first row are getting sent to the identity in c. On the other hand, we have the image of a inside of b. In other words, the image of the function g, which is my one-to-one -one homomorphism from a to b. That's this purple shaded row here. And to say that this is an exact sequence means that those two sets are the same set, that the image of g and the kernel of f, each of which is going to be a subgroup of b, by definition of homomorphism, when it's an exact sequence, those two are exactly the same set. In other words, we have both containments. We have both that the image of g is a subgroup of the kernel of f, and also that the kernel of f is a subgroup of the image of g. If we unpack both of those statements, it means, first of all, that everything which came from a via this one-to-one -one homomorphism will get sent to the identity in c. So the entirety of this purple row, the image of a, which is a subgroup of, of b, everything in there is getting sent to the identity element in C because of uh, image being a subgroup of the kernel. But then if the reverse is true, that also means that everything which got sent to the identity in C, so if I look at the pre-image of the identity, that's the kernel, has to have been something which is colored purple because it came from A. So coming from A means it gets sent to the identity. And conversely, getting sent to the identity in C means it must have come from A. That's what it means for this to be an exact sequence. So in our next video, we're going to see how this construction actually relates to all of the different building and deconstructing properties that we want to be able to grapple with in order to finally classify the finite abelian groups.